Dan from Dan Made in 3D and today we're going to be running through a Cinema 4D tutorial, a quick Cinema 4D tutorial on how to create this burning effect. Okay so we've got a simple cloth simulation, a pyro simulation and a colour change effect. Okay, it's going to be a fairly quick tutorial, so we're going to jump straight in and get going. Okay, so let's jump into Cinema 4D, let's quickly change some project settings. Let's press Ctrl D, let's go to our project settings. I'm going to keep the FPS on 30. Um, I'm going to go to our simulation settings. I'm going to change the gravity now to zero. And I'm going to change the scene scale to 10. Get those changes out of the way before we get started. First thing I'm really going to do is create a plane. Okay. And so that I can see the segments on the plane, I'm going to change the, the display settings to garrowed shading lines. That, that allows me to see the polygons on the plane. So I'm going to make the plane a bit wider let's say a thousand centimeters by uh, 600 yeah that looks all right that'll do and then I'm gonna up the segments because we need more segments to add more detail to the simulation let's put that to about 80 yeah and then let's put the height segments to slightly over 80 so that we've got nice square segments let's try 120 yep that'll do okay not what we want to, what we want to do is we want to create our vertex map tag to drive the simulation but the first thing i'm going to do before i do that is i'm going to rename my plane and just call that cloth because this is going to be our cloth simulation okay first thing i want to do is i want to right click my cloth and we want to come to other tags and create a vertex map so everything changes to red when you create the vertex map so let's go to our vertex tag let's go to the basic and let's change the name to one spherical field and freeze so there's a massive hint of how we're going to create this effect Next thing we want to do is we want something to drive this effect. So on our vertex map tag, we're going to come to fields and we're going to create ourselves a spherical field. You can start this spherical field from wherever you like. Uh, you can have it in the center, right, left, top right, bottom right, wherever you want. I'm going to go back for the top left again. Let's make sure my simulation all grows from the top left. How we're going to get this to grow is we're going to add a freeze effect. So back to our vertex map tag in the fields area, we're going to click and hold the modifier and we're going to select a freeze. Let's drag the freeze down so we've got our order of operations correct. So immediately if I press play, you'll see nothing happens. And that's because we need to change the blending mode of our spherical field. So we're back in the vertex map tag. We select our, our spherical field and in blending modes, we need to change that to max. Okay. And in our freeze modifier, we need to go down to mode and we need to change our mode to grow. I'm not going to change anything else for now. Let's just see if that works. Okay, great. So you can see our growth effect is working. But we just need to add a little bit more time to our timeline here. So down here where it says 90 frames in our timeline, let's just change that to 300. Let's give ourselves a little bit more time. And yeah, we've got our growth going all the way across the plane and completely taking over it. There we go, we've got enough time that's great okay so what we need to do now is we need our cloth to change to cloth so 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my cloth. I'm going to right click simulation tags and I'm going to add a cloth tag. And if I press play again, you'll see that nothing is happening and that's fine. If your plane is falling right now, if you press play and your plane just falls down the scene, then what you need to do is you need to change your gravity. We changed this at the start, but just in case you missed that step, I'm going to press Control D or Command D if you're on a Mac to get our project settings up. We're going to come to this simulation tab in the scene and we're going to change our gravity to zero. Okay, and now when you press play, the plane should just be floating. Okay, so now that we're back, now that we're back to that, let's change some settings on our cloth to get this vertex map to drive the transformation. So let's select our cloth tag. Let's go to the mix animation tab and let's enable this with pins option here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag our vertex map tag into the map field. So now if I press play, again, you'll see not a lot is happening but that's because we need some sort of dynamic force to affect the cloth or we need some sort of change in the cloth for it to start being affected by the gravity and the natural turbulence, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our cloth tag, we're gonna go to surface and one little quick thing that we're gonna do before we change anything else is I'm just gonna change the target length to one 10 I think 110 should be okay let's have a look let's press play yeah and as you can see we've got some simulation and you can see clearly where the vertex map is growing across the plane so that's working great that's working fantastic okay we've got our cloth we've got our vertex map working the cloth's moving a little bit, that's okay, that's fine, but we want the cloth to move a little bit more than that. So we're going to create some turbulence in the scene. How we're going to do that is we're going to go to simulate up here in the top. We go to forces and create a turbulence. Now if you press play straight away, we won't see much of a difference from the original simulation. So we need to adjust our turbulence settings here. So if we select our turbulence, um, let's create, let's change some settings here. Let's just have a little play, see what, see what affects what. Let's try our scale. Let's try 200. You know, you don't want to be too precious with your settings here. I mean, just have a play around. Whatever you think looks sort of cool, you know, go with whatever you think looks good. I think that looks okay. We've got a nice little bit of, um wavy turbulence here as the as the thing as the thing turns fully to cloth we've got some nice floating that's okay so we've got 200 percent scale that'll do um let's have a look let's have a look let's change the frequency to 25 maybe oh yes very nice okay okay that'll do for now that'll do for now okay so the next thing we want to do is we want to create our pyro simulation so we're done with the cloth for now if you're happy with your cloth let's move on if not you can add more turbulence you could if you wanted to you could add another turbulence let's say uh, let's put this to 50 let's put this to a thousand and let's put the strength to let's keep the strength on five could layer some turbulence get ourselves some more intricately moving cloth as you can see we've got a little bit more movement here on the cloth it looks a little bit more like it's underwater okay let's leave it for that if you're happy with your cloth let's move on if not obviously like i said let's keep tweaking some more settings but i'm okay with that for now so let's move on to the pyro so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to select my cloth and I'm just going to duplicate this by holding control and dragging. So let me just delete that again. Let's do that again. 
you could control and paste this so you could press control C and B copy and paste or you could select your cloth and if you hold control or command and drag that will also duplicate it okay and what else I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my cloth off for now my original cloth let's uh, disable the cloth tag so if you go to your cloth tag basic and where it says enable you can turn that off so that will turn off that cloth object and the tag and the spherical field completely so that's not affecting anything and our cloth number one we're going to change that to pyro because this is going to be our pyro simulation now the first thing we need to do is we need to modify our vertex map tag because at the moment this whole side of the cloth is is yellow which means when I when I add my pyro tag to it every part of this plane that is yellow will be emitting smoke and I don't want that what I want is just this start line here to be emitting our smoke Okay, so what and how we're gonna do that is with a second vertex map tag, and that's the this is a vital step for getting your pyro to to start on the correct section. Okay, so what I'm going to do is for now I'm gonna select my cloth tag in the basic. I'm just gonna select enable. Okay, so that we don't see any cloth deformation we just see our vertex map so I'm gonna click on the pyro and I'm going to right click go back to other and create a new vertex map tag so we're all default red okay I'm just gonna move that past our cloth tag and the first thing I'm gonna do before I change anything else is we're gonna rename this and we're gonna call it number two uh, let's call it pyro line for example this could be vertex map number two this could be whatever you want to name it but I'm gonna call it number two pyro line and I'm just gonna press ok enter and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to layer up the vertex map tags and I'm not sure if you knew you could do that but yes you can layer vertex map tags Okay, so I'm going to select my vertex map, I'm going to go to the fields tab, and I'm just going to drag and drop vertex map 1 into our tags. Okay, so if you press play, we've got this, we've got vertex map number 1, so we've got the growth back, but we're inside vertex map 2. So what we need to do now is we just need to clamp this so that the line this yellow line is just a line okay and how we're going to do that is we're going to create a curve modifier <coughs> is we're going to create a curve modifier okay so we're going to select vertex map 2 we're going to come to us fields to area and we're going to press and hold where it says freeze and we're going to create ourselves a curve okay now this curve is going to essentially control the shape of our vertex map so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press control I'm gonna click in the middle I'm gonna drag this to the top make it nice and even and I'm going to drag this side down and I'm going to create a nice hill shape okay and what you might see is when you press play again is this little line here and that's the exact effect that we want and as you can see this curve effector is almost crushing our our vertex map into a different shape so if we just come back to the start again let's refresh that 
So if we mess around with this curve, you'll see that different things start to happen. And all this is doing is just, it's just changing the gradient of the vertex field, okay? So this hill shape allows us to create this almost clamped layer effect, which is our wave, okay? So that's working fantastic. That's exactly what we want, okay? So as you can see now, you, you, you can probably understand now how that's going to drive our smoke, okay? One last time, okay. So now that we've got that created, we want to add our pyro. And the pyro, the new pyro system in Cinema 4D is brilliant. It's, it's fairly intuitive and it's pretty straightforward to be honest. I'm not really going to change many settings. I'm going to keep this as basic and as straightforward as I possibly can. I know I might be flying through a little bit, but I think that's the best way just to get through and get this made. So let's move on with the pyro. I'm going to keep everything fairly basic and fairly vanilla so that we're not changing many settings and you can see the power of just default settings pretty much in Cinema 4D and so far as you can see everything is fully procedural I haven't baked anything here I haven't baked anything down I haven't um, cached anything there is nothing that's everything here is vanilla and, and procedural and completely editable at every stage you can change the cloth you can change the vertex map you can change everything in here to make everything exactly how you want it's all fully procedural and that's exactly what we want wherever we can we want procedural so let's create our pyro let's get straight in so what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our pyro plane and we're going to go right click simulation tags and we're going to go to pyro emitter what that's going to do is it'll create a little pyro output settings there and a pyro tag so before we change anything if we just go and press play we'll give it a minute to press play and what you can see is that the whole plane is emitting smoke and immediately you know straight out the box that's it's not awful smoke it's not amazing but as you can see you know it's lit, there is fuel there there's smoke um, and it is working it is working fairly quick it's working in the viewport we haven't done anything what we want is we want that line to emit our smoke so we're going to go to our pyro we're going to drag and drop our vertex map tag our number two tag we're going to drag that into the emission map here okay i'm not going to change anything else i'm just going to press play and straight away you can see we've got our burning line okay there we go okay so now let's dial in a couple of these settings and let's make it a little bit more punchy let's add a little bit more smoke let's add a little bit more temperature and let's get it looking a little bit nicer okay so let's do a quick save before we move on make sure everything's nice and saved let's press Control s or we can go up to here on file and save project again okay so now the next thing I want to do is we want to add a little bit more smoke we want this to be a little bit more girthy and a little bit more intense so I'm gonna scroll down I'm on our, on our pyro tag I'm gonna scroll down a little bit and underneath temperature where it says fuel I'm going to, this might be dropped up, so I'm going to drop this down, I'm going to press fuel enabled and let's just see what this looks like. Woof. Now as you can see, that's a little bit too much. I mean, that might not be a bit too much for you, but that's a little bit too much for me. Look at that. Woof. Okay, okay, that's too much, that's too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, over on the right, on the fuel, on the fuel set, I'm going to change that to 1. Let's restart, let's go back. Yeah, that's a little bit nicer, that's a little bit nicer. Okay. Okay, that's a lot nicer. So what else can we change? Let's go to density. Let's have a look at our density tab. 
Um, let's have a change there. Let's change density set to one. Let's try that. Oh yes, there we go. And we can see some nice you can see some nice smoke coming off there, but again, it's a little bit static and it's a little bit flat and the smoke's not really doing anything. So we need to change the turbulence here. We want the, we want the smoke to be moving around a little bit more naturally, like it's uh, like there's a little bit of wind in the scene. So, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to the pyro output settings and I'm gonna go to pyro scene and pyro and the first thing I'm going to change is we're going to look for our general settings we're going to look for this turbulence tab here and let's see if we can just up the strength of the turbulence for now let's see if we can get some nicer smoke oh yes immediately you can see that the smoke here is immediately starting to shell around a little bit more okay it might be a little bit small but it's definitely working we're definitely getting some turbulent smoke there okay that'll do for now that'll do for me if you remember if you want to change any of these settings i'd just advise just having a play around there are so many settings within the pyro output and the actual pyro emitter tag for you to play with um, I would just say go nuts have a look around play with the density play with the temperature play with the fuel see what you can get see what nice smoke effects you can get the last thing you want to change with your pyro to get some nicer detail because as you can see that it's quite it's quite blurry almost at the moment it's quite smudged that's because simulations like this like smoke simulations usually work with voxels that's essentially a 3d pixel and what you want to do is if you want more detail in that simulation you want to you want to decrease the voxel size okay but that what that will do is will make the scene a lot heavier and a lot more taxing for your PC to deal with so you don't really want to change that until the end okay but I'm gonna show you right now how to change that and the difference that it makes okay so you can see my smoke at the moment is very pixelated it looks okay but it's it's not the best there's not much detail there so I'm gonna pause that I'm gonna go back to the start I'm gonna go to our pyro output pyro scene and pyro and the first setting you'll see there is voxel size all I'm gonna do is change that to two okay now immediately you will see how much longer it will take my scene to play it's not gonna be a huge increase but it will definitely be a lot heavier but you will see look at that, how much nicer the smoke is there compared to what it was before let's just have a little look at that very nice very nice so as you can see as you get as you drop the voxel size the detail will increase but also the data will the size will so let's just drop that to one let's just see if we can get some nice detail in that smoke okay so there we go heavy scene detected compute continuing might lead to crashes unexpected behavior do you want to proceed i'm not sure i want to proceed right now because I am filming a tutorial so I will press no for now and it's playing it anyway okay so as you can see look at the detail in that much better but again that is much more taxing for your PC and yeah we want to keep that high especially while we're editing not 58 we want to keep that high especially while we're editing just so that we've got some nice performance to play with okay so we've got our cloth we've got our pyro everything's ready to go let's enable our cloth tag again on our pyro emitter just so that you can see how it's acting with the cloth okay so let's give it a quick play now you can see the cloth is inactivated the cloth is moving 
as well as the pyro so immediately we are halfway there with our effect the basics are done the simulations there we've got some nice cloth that's changing into cloth as long as as, as where it's burning across this line and it looks really nice look at that the effects halfway there and we're ready to go so the last thing to do here is to create our color change material what we're going to do is we are going to click on our cloth plane and let's re-enable all of these so let's click on our cloth tag let's go to basic and enable to re-enable that cloth tag so what we have is our cloth plane and our pyro plane with the exact same cloth tag and the exact same cloth settings so they should be moving exactly the same okay so the only reason we need the pyro plane is to drive the pyro and we don't want to see that in our render so what i'm going to do for now is i'm going to double dot and double dot our pyro plane so that we cannot see the plane but we can see the smoke okay and what we're going to do is we're going to apply our color change texture to our cloth plane okay so that means that we've got our cloth plane in the scene that's moving like cloth and we have a pyro plane simply for the pyro okay so now let's add some textures let's get this textured up so on the top right here next to our render settings we have this this sort of spherical icon and that is our texture icon our material manager so we're going to click that to open it okay and then we're going to go up to create material and a material okay <coughs> Let's open up our material and we are greeted with our shader graph. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a few nodes that we need and before we get started and then I'll start connecting them up and showing you where to connect them. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is our material RS material node. We want to duplicate this. Yep. So again, you can click on the node. If you hold control or command and drag, it will duplicate. Or if you want, you can press control C, control V, or command C, command V if you're on a Mac. And we're just duplicating the material node. So we just have two of these materials. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a if we just press the little plus over in the top left I'm going to create a material blender node so if I just double click on that we've got our material blender let's zoom out a little bit let's move these over a little bit let's create um we've got our material blender node and um, I also want to create a vertex attributes node okay and the first thing I'm going to do is with this vertex attribute node selected I'm going to drag our first vertex map tag spherical field and freeze I'm going to drag that into our attribute name okay so that's our vertex map that's driving our simulation, okay? So what we need to do now is we need to set up our nodes. So I'm going to move our, our material blender down. I'm going to drag our first material out color into the base material, okay? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the second RS material out color into layer one material. Okay, 
and then I'm going to drag the out of our material blender into the surface. Okay, super straightforward. That's all we've done to so far. We've got two materials into a material blender and that's it, okay? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my vertex attribute down. Let's just tidy these up a little bit. I'm gonna put my vertex map attributes underneath and then I'm gonna drag the out color into the blend color, okay? So all that is, is our, that, that, that all that is doing is telling is our vertex map is telling our vertex map to drive the blending of these two colors, okay? Super straightforward. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make this, let's make this red. Yeah, so our first material on the diffuse color, let's just make it red. And then our second material on the diffuse color, let's make this blue. Okay, just so we can see what's going on to begin with. Right, so let's close that down. Let's apply this to our cloth plane. Let's go forward a few frames. Okay, let's pause it for now. Let's turn off the pyro. Let's keep our scene nice and fast. Let's go to the init tag, pyro tag, where it says enabled, uncheck that our pyro output let's uncheck that let's just keep our scene nice and simple and let's just turn off all of our pyro and let's keep the, the cloth scene in okay so let's give it a play let's go to our redshift render view and as you can see we've got our cloth our color change so at the moment, we have our basic red and blue, um, but that's a little bit boring. So for this tutorial, let's do something a little bit nicer. Um, and let's go for a, a sand and a glass like I did in the intro. So with our texture back open, let's go to our RS material that is blue. Let's change that to a glass. On our presets, let's change our, cust our preset custom to glass. And let's leave it at that for now. As you can see, the render view will update and it'll just be black. But that's because we have no lights in the scene for now, but that's okay, let's ignore that for now. Let's stop the render viewer, close that down, and focus on our texture. So I want a nice sandy material in my texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop some maps in that I have saved on my PC. So I have a nice sand texture that I found online. I'm sure you know where to find your textures. I'm not going to run through that right now. And I'm going to drag and drop that into my sand. Okay. And then I'm going to go on the out color and drag that into the diffuse color. And as you can see, we've got our sandy image in our texture. Let's go on to the RS material. Let's make this a little bit more realistic on our reflection. Let's just put this to 0.5, for example. Let's dull some of that reflection a little bit. Let's put the reflection color to about 80 just to make this material a little bit nicer. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a bump map. Super straightforward. I'm not gonna mess about with the maps too much. I'm not gonna go, go any more deep with this. Let's just grab the out color to our bump input and our out into our overall bump map, okay? I'm not going to go any more advanced with the textures for now. That's going to that, that's just leave it at that. We have our simple color change material from sand to glass. Okay, let's keep it at that. Let's keep it nice and straightforward. Let's close that down. As you can see in the viewport, we've, our sand is showing up. 
Let's go to the Redshift render view again and let's just have a quick look, see what this looks like. So as you can see, we've got our sand material. It looks a bit rubbish for now, but that's fine. If we play it through a little bit, we have our empty patch and our sand, so it is working, but let's just get a light in there. The only reason this looks black and rubbish is because we have no lights. So for now, for just for the sake of this video, let's throw in a simple dome light. Let's come to our dome light settings. Let's turn the background off. And there we go. We can see our glass, our, our glass cloth changing over the sand and everything is working like we want it to. We can make the textures look a bit a little bit nicer in the end, but for now let's get on with the tutorial. So let's stop the render viewer. Let's close that down. The next thing we want to do is we need to be able to see our pyro in the viewport. So let's get everything enabled again. Spherical field, pyro plane, pyro output. Let's select our pyro tag, enable that. Let's select our cloth tag, let's enable that. So everything's enabled again. We just can't see the plane in the view in the render view. So that's great. Let's restart. Now we need to be able to see our pyro in the render view. And in order to do that, we need to create a pyro texture. Now this is a lot more straightforward than it used to be. Um, you used to have to bake out the pyro into a VBD, then create a volume and all sorts of extra, extra stuff. But now, that pyro has been integrated into Cinema 4D. We don't need to do that anymore. It's nice and straightforward. So we're going to come up to here to create material and we're just going to create a pyro volume. Super straightforward. That's all you have to do. Let's drag and drop that onto our pyro. Let's go, let's restart the timeline. Let's play it through. Let's wait till it's played through a little bit. Okay, and let's open up our Redshift render view again. Let's press play. Okay, and immediately, there we go. We have some smoke burning across the plane. So there we go, guys. I mean, that's pretty much it. Your pyro's done, your cloth's done. The textures are done everything's ready to go and like I said this is fully customizable you can change how much you want your cloth to move around you can change whatever texture you want the colors to change between you can adjust the brightness of your smoke you can adjust the amount of smoke you can adjust the size of your flames you can adjust the resolution of your smoke so let me just give this another another quick play just give that a little second to jump back in I don't know why it did that but you can see how much nicer this smoke looks now Ooh, look at that and if I want to get this sand texture to look a little bit nicer as well let's open up our material let's select our sand node let's just up the scale here to maybe three by three there we go our sands a little bit nicer we can change the bump uh, let's just keep that around 0.5 um, again we can change our glass you could change that to whatever you want that doesn't have to be glass you could change it to aluminium and you've got your metal burning here you could change that to a whatever you wanted you could change it to a plastic that is luminous purple And there you go, we're going from purple to sand, from sand to purple. But you get the gist. Okay, guys, that's going to be me for now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. It'll be interesting to see what you can do with that. Remember, the colors are infinite. You can do whatever you want with the colors. You can go as crazy as you want. Like I said, I've done... I've done a steel and a cut... I've done a cotton and steel mixed with corrugated steel and I've done a sand mixed with a, a glassy cloth and I've done a red velvet into a gold 
and I've done a blue a red cloth into a blue cloth nice and simple but like I said the options are endless and that's completely up to you uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial um, if you want to hear more if you've got any questions if you've got any questions don't feel don't don't be don't be afraid to ask uh, in the comments or feel free to send me a message um, and yeah happy creating guys I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.